Hi, this video is about how to add a payment plan to your product. If you don't know what this is, I've linked a video for you in the top right hand corner. Before you start your payment plan, you should already have created a product. You can also find out how to do this in a video, which is now linked in the top right hand corner instead. So now let's get started. To start, go to Account, and then Products. Click on the pencil icon next to the product to which you want to add the payment plan and switch to the Payment Plans tab. At the top, you'll find the basic settings that apply to all payment plans. If you haven't set them yet, you should do that now. First step is to set the currencies in which your product can be purchased. In the next point, you have to set whether the prices for payment plans are displayed as net or gross prices. That obviously isn't required for US sales, as it only exists in European countries. Note though, however, US sales tax will always be added. For example, $20 as a single purchase price. If the $20 should be a net price, the VAT of the buyer's country will be added to it by default. The final price for your customers may vary depending on where they're from. If they're from Germany, it's a 19% VAT. Austria is a 20% VAT and Switzerland is 7.7% VAT. For gross prices, however, the VAT is integrated so that the final price for your customers is always the same. The only thing that changes is the amount that serves as the basis for calculating your turnover. Once you've done this, select whether the VAT should be shown on the order form. If you select no, instead of the amount of VAT being displayed, there's a note saying that VAT is included. As a final step, select the payment methods and click on save. Now we can start with your payment plans. If you've never created a payment plan before, your product will already have a preset payment plan. In this case, scroll all the way down and click on the pencil icon next to the payment plan. You can also directly add another payment plan. To do so, start directly in the add payment plan window. First, Select the currency in which you want this payment plan to be displayed. Also select whether your customer is allowed a free test period. If you select a time period here, for example, one month, the sales price of your product will only be debited once this period has expired. Let's move on to the main payment plan options. How you proceed here depends on which payment type you want to use for your payment plan. Single payment, subscription, or installments. The instructions will be slightly different depending on what you choose. Start with a single payment. First, make sure that the type single payment is selected for number of payments. Since as the name suggests, the purchase is made with a single payment, you simply set the sales price of your product in first payment. Click on the save button at the bottom and you're done. If you want to add a subscription, you must select subscription for number of payments. For first payment, Specify the amount to be debited directly upon purchase or if set after the test period. For follow-up payments, you then specify the amount that you want for all subsequent debits. The next step is to set the billing intervals. Set how long you want to wait until the second debit. For follow-up billing intervals, choose how long the other time intervals should be until the next debit. That may have sounded a bit complicated, so let's take a look at what I just said and go through it once more together. First of all, I've set a test period of one month. Let's assume that my customer buys a product on January 1st, meaning the payment plan will begin on February 1st. Because I set $10 as the first payment, $10 will be debited for the first time on February 1st. I've set the next billing date under first billing interval. I also set this at one month, which is why the next billing date is March 1st. However, the amount from the first payment no longer applies as the first payment has already been made. From now on, the amount in the follow-up payments field shall apply. Here it is set to $5. And because the follow-up billing intervals apply from now on, for which I've also set two months, $5 will be debited on March 1st, and then every two months thereafter. So May 1st, July 1st, and so on. But let's move on now. There are two important settings the minimum term where you can set the minimum duration of the subscription before the customer can cancel and the option that a change of tariff should be possible. However, this setting is only useful if you add several payment plans, for example, a monthly subscription and an annual subscription. If you select yes here, your customer can change their plan on their own at any time. As a last step, click on the save button at the bottom. Your subscription is now ready. If you want to add installments, 
you have to select one of the numbers listed under Number of Payments. These numbers represent the number of installments. For example, if you select 4, there will be a total of 4 installments. For first payment, set the amount of your first installment that will be debited directly upon purchase, or if set, after the test period. For follow-up payments, set the amount that you would like to debit for all subsequent installments. The next step is to set the billing intervals. Specify how long you want to wait after the first installment for the second installment to be debited. For follow-up billing intervals, specify the time period after which all installments should be settled. Since this is probably a bit too much to take in all at once, let's take a look at what I've just said and go through it all again together. First of all, I've set a test period of one month. Let's assume that a customer buys my product on January 1st, meaning the payment plan will begin on February 1st. Because I set $100 as the first payment, $100 will be debited for the first time on February 1st. I've set the next billing date under first billing interval. I also set this at one month, which is why the next billing date is March 1st, when the customer will pay the second installment. However, the amount from the first payment no longer applies as the first payment has already been made. From now on, the amount in the follow-up payments field shall apply. Here I've set $50, which is why $50 will be debited for the second installment. There are still two installments open, as I set a total of four installments in the number of payments field. These will now be debited at the interval that I set for follow-up billing intervals. In other words, every two months, starting on March 1st. So the customer will pay $50 on May 1st and $50 on July 1st. Now let's continue. Finally, you have to select whether your customers can cancel the installments themselves or not. Once you've done this, click on the Save button below. You're now done with this payment plan. It goes without saying that you can also add several payment plans. For example, you can make life easier for your customers by adding the option of paying in installments for a high-priced single payment. However, you proceed in the same way I've just shown you. So repeat the parts of the video that are relevant to you and add new payment plans to offer your customers greater flexibility and convenience.